What's up everybody? We are heading out on a Miller's run. It is a Wednesday afternoon midweek run and we've got uh, moderate to strong conditions which is probably the best conditions for the majority of people. It's not out of control um, but it's more than strong enough blowing southeasterly in False Bay. Um, so the runs are great. I haven't seen the sea yet um, but just by seeing what the wind's doing at home uh, I thought that it's going to be a great uh, opportunity to go do a run um, and very exciting is uh, I'm gonna take the epic v9 elite uh, for uh, for my first paddle haven't been able to get on that ski yet um, and a lot of the guys have been raving about it so managed to get hold of one for the run today so I'm gonna give that a bash and uh, hopefully have some feedback um, and enjoy myself on that ski just going to pick up my mom who's gonna drive us uh, meet a friend at the beach and we're gonna hopefully have a cooking Miller's run. So here's our driver. Hello. This is my mom, Mums. If you've done a downwind with us in Fishhook, then uh, most probably my mom has driven for us. She's done her fair share of Miller's driving, hey Mums? Absolutely. I know it all. Every wave, every route. Have you got your binoculars today? I've got my binocs. I'll show you. So you know that I can watch everybody. Everyone's safe. Yes. Whole group of guys heading out for a downwind, so we'll load up quickly and we'll catch up with them. Okay, there she is, the Epic V9 Elite layup, so nice and light, full carbon vacuum. I'm gonna take this baby for a spin today, It'll be the first time I'm in the uh, V9, and really looking forward to giving it a good crack. But it looks beautiful. On the road, heading out to Miller's. Is my paddle buddy, yes. Garth Collins. <laughs> As I said, I'm paddling the V9 for the first time, so looking forward to that. And these conditions are looking awesome. They, this is probably where most people are, should be at. It's, um, it's probably blowing about 22, 23 knots, uh, which is good substantial wind. That's pretty strong. Um, but I think the big bonus today on the Miller's run specifically is that there's not a big groundswell running. So, um, you know, the runs that you're going to catch are... Uh, runs that have been generated quite close to the run or on the run itself they probably won't be much bigger than three four feet um, and not moving too fast so what that means is that it, that it doesn't take too much effort to to get onto the swell and secondly it doesn't take too much effort to stay on the swell and um, so what do they need to focus on is how do you take your speed from one swell to the next how do you link runs and that's what we'll that's what I'll look at and what I'll film when we're out there and, and chat about it a bit more but over and above all those technical things, I think it's just going to be a super fun run. Um, water's looking, water's looking beautiful. Managed to catch up to the trailers, so the guys are just taking off. We're going to get uh, Garth on the water here, and his trusty bluefin. You can go off with the group. Yes. And yeah, still conditions still looking absolutely perfect. Are you Good. Okay. Thanks. So a nice big group just uh, got in the water for a Miller's here and we're getting Garth onto the tail end of that group which is quite cool. There's David, Dukka Smoker. Setting the boat up, getting the pedal set up. I'll uh, do a final check of the leg length when I'm sitting on the water. So I don't want to sit in the boat now on dry land. Um, just check that the rudder is straight, so that looks good. We don't want the rudder to be sitting like that when the pedals are lined up. So I line the pedals up, you can see the rudder is pretty straight, so that's good. And then I'll do a final check here when I'm on the water. Everything else looks great. Okay, conditions are looking awesome. It's probably a probably little bit less wind than I thought, probably just under 20 knots. Uh, which is fun, uh, super fun for most people. Like I said, probably where 80 to 90% of people should be doing the downwind, so they'll probably end up having the most fun where it's not too big and out of control. Um, so yeah, so really looking forward to that. Uh, have a quick look at the equipment set up here. So I've got the Epic Midwings Pro Grip, uh, 212, 60 degrees. And then I've got the Mocker Leash, which I love about it, it's nice and strong and no moving parts, just Velcro and quick release straps. So super simple and no admin, no risk of anything rusting or any clips failing. And then like I said, taking the V9 for it's my first paddle on the V9. 
So we'll see how it performs. Uh, once we're out there, I'll stop here and there and do a couple of things and uh, give a couple of thoughts on what I find out there. It's walking down the slipway here at Miller's. There are two slipways that you can launch from. Um, most of the time, I go around that rock out there, which is where we start our watch from if you want to log an official time or for your own records or whatever. So that's where a lot of guys go around that rock. Most people don't go around the rock though, they just go from the slipway on the other side, which is a bit more protected. An easier launch, the slipway is a bit more exposed, um, but the one that I generally use when I go on my own also gives me a bit more distance on the downwind. Okay, off we go. So, leg length is feeling a little bit long. If you look down at my knees there, you can see my legs are quite straight. Ideally, I want my knees about there, which will give me good pressure on my heels, which helps me to generate a bit more power with the stroke. Okay, that feels good. Off we go. So, use the paddle out to the rock as a little warm up. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to this. First thoughts on the boat. Incredible, it just glides. You can see the trim's very nice. Uh, the nose isn't up at all. In fact, I'd say that it's pretty nose down. Uh, I weigh about 78 kilograms. Um, so, not the heaviest. But it's cutting nicely through the water. Feel the trim's nice. So, looking at this, my first thoughts are that most probably what you'll find is that it'll nosedive a bit more than some of the other boats like the uh, say like the v epic v10 sport or the fin swordfish but what that also means is that it takes less effort to get onto a run so once we go down and we'll see almost at the start point of the millers just going around this rock in front of me if i turn to the south to the right that's Cape Point in the distance, Cape of Good Hope. Paddled around there a number of times, taking people around there. Should probably do something around there quite soon. But for today, it's a Miller's Run, around the rock in front of me, turn left and down to Fishhook, which is that, if you can see that mast in the distance, Fishhook straight down from that. Uh, just under 12 kilometers of downwind paddling. Uh, nice and easy, low hanging fruit and just a wonderful day to be out here and doing that. Start the watch, off we go. Miller's run in the Epic V9. Straight into it. Yoo thoughts I think are the boat's very turnable very maneuverable so what that means is that there's less use of the rudder so I don't have to jam the rudder to turn the boat I can sort of lean and just touch the rudder and I can get to where I want to go and what that means is I slow the boat down less so remember every time you jam the rudder hard you're creating resistance and you're slowing the boat down which means you've got to work harder for a run so what I'm able to do with this boat is because it's a wider boat than a traditional racing boat would be it's not the widest boat but it's wider than my racing ski what i'm doing is i'm trying not to jump on the rudder too much keep the lines as straight and as long as possible and just every time i need to turn just look down at the rudder slight touches look at that with my right foot now slight touch and then back onto the left foot so keeping everything very gradual not slowing the boat down too much and that's allowing me to get into a nice rhythm runs aren't too big so what that means is i'm not putting my paddles down a hell of a lot i'm pretty much keeping a constant cadence going so it's just getting into a nice rhythm harder work than i thought it would be today but uh, there's no such thing as a bad down into a bad middle run it just doesn't exist it all depends what you make of conditions on the day 
so here we are doing just that in the v9 okay so there we go that kilometer 349 you can see in the v9 which is great for that to come up while i was talking now so 349 is not a slow time let me tell you on a day like today going at about 70 80 percent talking the whole way 349 that tells me a lot about this ski really really impressed And there is the world famous Roman Rock Lighthouse. Beautiful, because I'd done the hard work before, I'd built up speed, get onto this one with very little effort. Just try and back it up with another one. Another big one. Come on. Yep. And he gets there. Beautiful. Oh yes. V9, let me tell you, this is something nice. Very excited about the ski. Roman Rock Lighthouse. I'm uh, sitting out on the uh, Miller's Run. Miller's Point behind me. Fishing in front of me. That's Simon Sound to my left. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna put myself at a bit of a disadvantage. Because um, we often get paddlers saying, look, it's all good and well, you're giving, saying this and saying that, but we actually don't have the strength and the power to do what the elite paddlers do. So what I'm gonna try and do is take some of that advantage that I have away. So I paddle normally with the right feather, so which means that I twist the blade with my right hand. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change my paddle to a left hand feather, which I'm not used to at all, and I'm gonna make the paddle shorter. So I'm gonna drop it down to 210. So the result that that has is it's gonna give me less power. So it's gonna take that out of the equation. Obviously I've still got my skill, I know what to look for. So, you know, that's, that's what I have, so I can't get away from that. But what I'm gonna try and do is just, I'm gonna try and have the best downwind with less power. And then what you can do is you can relate to that and say, okay, this is kind of where I would be at. So these are the runs that I'm gonna look for. So let's see with less power, which runs I take and what decisions I make. Hopefully that helps a little bit more. And now as we're looking upwind, you get a better idea of what the conditions are like. You can see when you look downwind, with well, the GoPro, it looks fairly small, but then as soon as you um, turn the camera around and you look into the wind, you can see it's actually bigger than what you think. So probably about two to three feet and, and overall, like just super fun conditions. So let me, let me change my feather, take the power out of the equation and let's see what the result is. Okay. So let's go, there we go, feels super weird. <laughs> let's go, so now I'm taking the power out of this, but let's see, <laughs> and maybe this is closer to what you, your strength, so if we were on flat water now or on this, we'd probably be racing. So now I've only got my skill to get me through this because I've taken the power out of it. <clears throat> it's quite nice. I'm not forcing myself to go for the big ones. Just forcing, I'm purely using a bit of a slice stroke there. There you go. Now I'm forced now. Can't rely on my power, I can't muscle my way through this just using the runs okay here we go okay you can see there a bit of a weird stroke for my there okay it's building up so now this is where i put power normally so now i've got less power but let's try to get the nose in the hole yes yeah, everyone can do that lovely run beautiful look at that now i want to try and maximize this run so Anticipating where that hole is going to form using the speed that I had and into the next one. Very nice. Okay, let's try and follow that. Oh, okay, normally I'd get there, but now the left hand feather I didn't get there. So that's fine. Now I look for a little one. Get me going. Here we go. Here's my run. Little ones, these two big ones. Now, this, let me tell you, these runs are gold. This run that I'm catching now, this is what you want. Easy to catch, not going fast. But it just keeps the boat speed up. What's the speed here? 13 and a half. This is, this is money for jam. 14 and a half, 15. This is what you want. Keeps the speed going. Use that speed. Look for the next one. Looks like I'm going slow, but I'm telling you, going 12, 13 k's an hour here. Yeah, almost 14 k's an hour on this run. Now use that speed. Let's go over the top. Can I get there? Lifting the cadence. It's a key component of Danon paddling. You know what I'm loving about this boat, this V9, is it's nose diving a lot less than I thought it would. 
they've got the trim absolutely right on this boat obviously the seat is not as close to the nose as I thought it was look at this, what a run still on the same run, beautiful amazing notice I'm still paddling still paddling, gotta keep the speed up you don't want your speed to drop and take you more effort to re-accelerate okay, here we go, get onto this nose in the hole yeah, perfect perfect beautiful then every now and then you do get these long runs you can just sit back enjoy it okay so for that past passage i was going with the left hand feather really enjoyed it actually got into really good rhythm and it's a surprising how quickly you get used to that and um, one day what we'll do is i'll do the the uh, the no feather you know what uh, what oscar's promoting what a lot of guys are doing is no feather so let's say uh, yeah, we'll check that out one day not today so i'm going to switch over to right hand feather and then it's uh, the last probably two and a half case to go to fishing beach you can see a paddle over there that's dominic notton doing the out and back putting in his miles so we caught him he's doing his sneak training into the wind so let's enjoy this last two k's back to the beach Beautiful. Phew, look at that. <coughs> nice. <laughs> Beautiful run. Wow. Oh yeah, those are the runs that make it downwind. I think that's the one thing you find with a shorter boat is that they decelerate a bit quicker. So longer boats probably find that these swells would would pull you further and keep your speed up a bit longer so these boats lose their speed a bit quicker the shorter ones but then again in the same breath you accelerate them with less effort so it's a bit of a trade-off and I'd say on a day like today where you've got to have this, there's not a lot of ground swell around so you're having to accelerate the boat quite often onto these smaller swells a uh, shorter boat like this is perfect Like I said, I'm still going 340s there. So, yeah, it doesn't matter what boat you're in, it's on bad splits. So, certainly not slow. The beautiful Miller's Run turning into a lucky little wave at the beach. Oh man, I can tell you, this boat is incredible. I actually really enjoy that. What a Miller's run. Moderate conditions, probably 17, 18 knots, but just very moderate, manageable, nice runs. Nice big crew, Miller's run. Hey Neil. Lekker man. This was a nice run, eh? So I think first thoughts when I when I got in was definitely a shorter boat. So as, as you get in, you can feel like it's it's, it's a short boat, yeah. and I think the you know the temptation is you think okay it's uh, you you tend to uh, put it in the V8 V8 Pro class, but then as soon as you get going, you realise no, it's not that at all. It's yeah. it's in that V10 Sport class. That's what it's in. Yeah. So it's it's an intermediate boat. Um, I think it's very 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 manoeuvrable, very steerable, which means that you potentially can use the rudder less so it de doesn't decelerate as much oh, so you can okay. keep your speed up yeah. which which puts it in that intermediate class of boat um, and then i think because it's a bit shorter you can accelerate it a lot easier okay. so you can quickly you know once you get off a run you can quickly get on you know when you fall off a run yes. one two three four five strokes and you're onto that next run yeah. which is uh which, which is what i think makes it incredible and then i think the surfability is is really really nice so okay. i loved it i thought it was great it? yeah i mean I, yeah. I really enjoyed it and i think the being the elite layup um it makes it nice and light once again you yeah. can get that speed up nice and quickly so yeah, yeah i think v, v9 v9 yeah. yeah 
just incredible. Well, it's like yeah. I'm thrilled you've used it because I, you know, I was interested in your feedback. You know, just I think one, you know, one big thing is that when I first got in, I thought okay, it was probably going to nose dive quite a bit, which it didn't nose dive at all. Never. I so never you know, that was that was counterintuitive. Never spins up. No, spin that, up so that, that's the thing. The surfability of the boat's great, yeah, nice. but the big thing was that the the there was there was almost no nose diving, you know, which which shows you that the seat's probably quite far back. Okay. Um, more than what you think when you get in, you think I'm sitting quite close here, but but yeah. you're not at all. You probably. The distance from the nose is probably about the same as like a V10 Sport, you know? Yeah, but yeah. you don't get that feeling that the nose is on flat water like the nose is coming up. Right. The trim's nice. Yeah. You know, the nose is down. So okay. I think you, you've okay. got a great boat there. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. There that's you good go. to hear. I, um, yeah, it's interesting what you say because for me, definitely, it's definitely an intermediate boat. You know, it's not a. Um, it's not an entry level boat. Yeah, no. almost, as I say to you, in the bigger conditions, I always want to be on my V10. I just feel yes. more solid in it. But that surfability, I often feel like it's, you know, you, you think you, you're going to not get a run. You get, no, and then suddenly you, you just yes. you like squeeze yeah, through. Yeah, just get onto like, it. You know, whoa, that wasn't unexpected. You know? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah.